All right, this is Lauren Henderson for Practicum um, Experience. Uh, Lauren, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Review your, what are some of your original Practicum goals? Well, they were to kind of like gather a better understanding of what I would like to get into <clears throat> after I graduate and stuff. And so, um, this semester I really wanted to try out getting hands-on, like, in-person experience with somebody who has had, like, troubles in their life and, like, somebody who actually looks to me as kind of a counselor type of person and also helping out with um, another person who has actual disabilities but is learning, you know, basic skills and such such things like that like it was really good to gain that type of experience felt like I could handle it so okay. um, how has that helped you meet those goals how have you how were you able to do that how did you do it well I just put myself out there and I um, wasn't hesitant about you know trying to like become friends with these people and you know letting myself op be open up to them because they that's how we open up to each other and so it was a growing experience and the Lord really did have a huge impact in those experiences so okay yeah. uh, would you want to work in a similar environment in the future why or why not you want to do this again I think that would be great I mean I know every experience is different and I know like it won't be, maybe it was easy this time, but it won't be easy next time and stuff. So it'll be more of a process and more of a patience tester, but I think it'll be um, something worthwhile in the end because all I want to do is figure out how, like, step-by-step -step people can meet their own goals. So, so. so basically because... We didn't really describe it. What you did this semester was you sort of became a peer mm -hmm. assistant to mm -hmm. somebody on like campus. Like a mentor. A mm -hmm. mentor on campus. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we, in circles we might call that a, an a ally. ally. You became mm -hmm. an ally because it's, it's more of an equal relationship that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and you, and you just sort of naturally picked up on somebody in the, mm -hmm. within the the campus that mm -hmm. you knew who was struggling. Or did they come yes. to you, or how did you connect, make that connection? Well, my friend, um, you know, Sarah Sappy. <laughs> no, but that's oh, fine. Well, she brought her friend um, to Bible study one night, and it was when we were just getting together, everybody, for our Bible studies. And so she was a freshman girl. She came in, and, you know, she shared a little bit with us. She was very bubbly and very, like, she just showed a lot of God's love, like, naturally. She has a huge love for God. And so she, from learning about me specifically in the whole group of us, she texted me one time. She got my number from Sarah, and she was like, okay, so I, I just feel like I want to get to know you and talk to you over coffee. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know who it was, so I had to ask her, and I was like, okay, so we met up for coffee, and we sat down for about three hours, and we talked about each other's testimonies, we just opened up, and it was funny, because right before she told me her most, like, impacted experience when she was younger, it was very traumatic, I knew what it was, I just knew what it was, mm -hmm. it was really weird, it was, I could just feel it out as we were talking, and I knew it was something that big and that traumatic but we were both like shocked <laughs> like, but it was really it was sad to hear but it was also like I was glad that she was finally coming to terms with what had happened to her because she didn't open up about her story until she came to Oakloo so it was really I felt honored so mm -hmm. yeah so is the Bible study something you're doing on campus no, it's something I'm doing at my apartment. Okay. And but it's a it, women's Bible study. So, so what, you're the sponsor of it, or is it something that, where did it originate from? At your church, or mm -hmm. just something you wanted to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I'm just curious about the process, so I'm just oh, trying yeah. to... We have a Facebook page, too, so... For your Bible study? Mm -hmm. Oh. So we just try to invite a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this really happened, I guess you could say, supernaturally or naturally, how yeah. you look at it. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. sort of like it, It's sort of like in Run the Streets when you, we run next to people, mm -hmm. and the people that are running next to us, we end up maybe connecting, mm -hmm. and it was just a natural thing that happened. It, it wasn't like somebody assigned her to you, mm -hmm. or it just happened no, it in just the happened. process. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. I really like that. I like that idea that... Uh, we don't have to make things happen oh, or yeah. make it official, authoritarian. Because right. then it's more, not genuine. You right, know? right. And so if we provide opportunities like your Bible study for people to get connected mm -hmm. and make maybe Bible studies a, a, a focus of mm -hmm. are you struggling, Are you? Mm -hmm. what is it that you need in life. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes a lot of sense. So that, that's what we were talking about earlier about how to develop a, a circles kind of initiative here on campus. Mm -hmm maybe even have one here on campus, something mm -hmm. like that, where people wouldn't have to drive or whatever, but they right. would be able to come. Mm -hmm. Or there could be a multiple ways of that happening. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about that. Mm -hmm. um, how have you changed in the course of this experience? I feel like I've become more mature with the fact that like, I find, I've met somebody who has had such a a traumatic life and now has she's admirable because she's come out of that she's still going through she's still going through some of the symptoms that it's like it, it feels like symptoms you know like she's it's how you she has night terrors yeah and she's she still can't forgive what happened to her but she accepts it now and she shows all she wants to do is put God in people's hearts she she wants to let God be the focus when she's with people. And so, and she just wants to help. So, I mean, she's she's really like helped me grow as a person and to see like these people go through these things, but yet they still find the light out. They still follow that and they still are on a good path. They can get themselves out. They don't always have to be engulfed in that problem, even mm -hmm. though they can be, which is very understandable because it can be super mm -hmm. traumatic. Um, it's a process of recovery rather than a... Right. I right. mean, I it believe in cool lightning bolt recovery. experiences, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. usually it's a relapse, kind right. of go back and forth with it, because it's right. life. Right. It happened right. to us. We can't make it unhappen. Right. But the thing was, she did put on a, a face for people mm -hmm. because That's she hasn't told her family. She hasn't told anybody. It was like what Shannon was saying, like, you don't tell certain things to your family because you don't want to crush them so right. and they may not be able to handle it or right. or help you right and it. her mother had a cancer scare so I mean mm -hmm. she she has a lot on her plate other than what had happened to her so okay. yeah cool mm -hmm. um, do you have any other new insights as a result of your experience I mean that's kind of what you were sharing just mm -hmm. now okay um, what have you learned about uh, the population you were working with, I guess, in this case, helping other people like the, in this situation? What have you learned? Is there anything else you learned? To listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to listen and to ask questions. I took a lot of what I learned, like, as a friend I did it, but more so because I knew it was the right thing to do other than telling her things, you know, telling like, her like advice. Like in techniques. Or, yeah. Right techniques and principles really helped me like gather what I needed to do I wasn't like I don't know what to do I don't know she's right. telling me these things I can't relate I don't know what to do it was more of like being like a respectful curious type of vibe going on like that I tried to ask her respect respectful questions and see you know if she wanted to answer them and if she didn't that was perfectly fine I would understand and we could get off the subject but she really dove into her detail with me and I felt like she could share a lot with me and I I really really respected that and I really well it, there's, it says a lot about you and your genuineness too because the mm -hmm. more genuine you are and the more empathetic mm -hmm. you know Carl Rogers you know mm -hmm. unconditional positive regard yeah or Christianity mm -hmm. love unconditional love mm -hmm. that 
you sh obviously showed that, and that that's what opens those doors for people to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Very good. Um, what have you learned about others who work in the field? Well, <laughs> I kind of, well, through this experience, I could see like how a counselor would approach it. And I'm not licensed. I've never counseled professionally or anything like that. But <laughs> I could see how like their questions could be guided with a goal in mind. And so, um, yeah, and just learning to be as empathetic as I could and caring, so. You kind of sat in that other seat in, in a way, mm -hmm. in, the, in the mentor seat versus the students. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is about on-site supervisor, which you really didn't, I didn't, I didn't do much for you on that deal. How did the working conditions of your site affect your practicum experience? Uh, that's probably not. What aspects of your previous in-class learning were relevant to your practicum experience? You've already talked about yeah. techniques. Techniques and, and principles, principles and even abnormal behavior. Like it was good to kind of ask questions with that. She doesn't have, you know, obviously she doesn't have those things, but what had happened to her, um, called for like asking maybe those questions maybe like what was the root of this do you think it could have been that do you think has this person shown these signs like you know like it, those knowing those things having those um in my head you know from previous classes it really did help and it came out and I did use it you know it mm -hmm. wasn't just like just useless having it, knowledge. Just you know, having that. it there as reference right, material. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what most of us do. Uh -huh. It's not it's not there to diagnose anybody. It's there right. to this sounds like this or this sounds like this. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. And then and the more experience you get with it, the more ability to see what those categories mm -hmm. can be useful for some people as long as we don't call them what those categories are. Right. Like. right. As long as we realize they're human beings. Right. They just have a set of manifestations or symptoms, whatever, mm -hmm. and so we can use that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's surprising, that surprised you from your practical experience? How, I guess how I've, like, how we've kind of come together, like, her temperament and my temperament aren't that different, so it helped, but, like, um, just having myself like be there for somebody in that way even though you know I've never gone through what she had her trust in me and her her just interest in keep tell it into keep telling me things and like seeing what I would tell her or you know just having somebody there to listen to her who's older and is in psychology that helped her open up too as well so I don't know, it was just really nice. I've never had anybody really depend on me like that mm -hmm. and respect me in that type of authority, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it was eye-opening. It was nice. Did you, did you set boundaries with her? I mean, did you describe what you were doing? How, how did that work for you? Well, I did tell her, like, I wasn't going to, like, see her as, like, you know, like somebody who has something wrong with her or somebody who had gone through something. I saw her as a friend, but I also, like, wanted, wanted to go about it cautiously, and when I asked her questions, I told her, like, hey, like, from what I know, like, I'm just wondering if it's, do you think it's this? Like, did it show this? Like, did this happen? Because if it did, it could have been this. Mm -hmm. And it opened her mind up to different possibilities with the whole situation. So... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, boundaries, we didn't talk about it longer than she wanted to. And I never asked questions that would be completely disrespectful, so. Was yeah. there, um, did you have any limits? Like, did you tell her what you were, I mean, you kind of said that already, but 
Is this an ongoing relationship? Yes. Yes. Okay. 